Okay. Welcome today to today's uh, webinar, Do This, Not That, Email Tips That Work Now with Jay Schwedelson. My name is Bernie Jaroslow. I'm the Marketing Manager for Whitmix, and I will be facilitating the webinar this morning. I'd like to begin with a couple uh, housekeeping tips. Uh, first, you should see a Zoom questions box, so please feel free to type in any questions you might have throughout the presentation, and Jay will answer them at the end. Uh, next, if you're a CDT or a dentist and you need CE credit uh, toward recertification, you will receive a, an email within one to two days that will tell you how to obtain your credit. Also, the webinar is being recorded. So within about 48 hours or so, uh, it'll be up on the Whitmix web website in our webinar section and also our YouTube channel. So you'll be able to watch that any anytime you'd like. Uh, today, Jay will be talking about the ins and outs, the do's and don'ts of email marketing. I have seen his presentations before, so I know you're in for a treat. It's going to be a great presentation. Jay is the founder of SubjectLine.com, the leading uh, subject line rating tool ranked in the top 1% of all websites worldwide. Jay is also the president and CEO of World Data Group a multi-brand marketing services company whose portfolio includes subjectline.com, outcome media, and guru events. So Jay, that's all I've got. If you're ready, let's talk about email marketing. Awesome. Let me share my screen here so we can uh, get rolling and uh, really excited, really excited to be here. Um, thank you for the kind introduction. I promise you I've been to the dentist uh, within the last six months, so I feel feel good about that. Um, but I want to take you guys through a lot of what's going on in the world of email marketing that could really hopefully impact your businesses in, in a big way. Um, you know, you heard, you heard about my background and basically my overall business, we're really a, what we call an agency, a demand generation agency. We work with both business marketers. So uh, for the lab companies that are trying to market to uh, dentist offices or whatnot, we work with the business side and the consumer side, obviously uh, with the dentist offices marking down to the patients. But we do this with some of the 40 of the top 100 brands on the planet, work with a lot of folks. Anyway, who cares? We don't just do email. We do all sorts of other media, direct response, direct mail, podcast advertising, whatever. But in the world of email, we do a lot of email. And we don't own any data. We don't own any platforms. We work on all the platforms on behalf of our clients, whether that's a MailChimp or a HubSpot or a Pardot or a Salesforce or a Campaign Monitor. We work with all of them. And we transmit about 6 billion messages annually. So that's where all my data comes from. We aggregate all this information. And that's where it comes from. So when we talk about email marketing, you know, and this can apply to any of the marketing that you're doing. I know that the people that are going to watch this today and in the future, you're wearing a lot of hats, right? You're not just an email marketing person. You're, you're, you're doing all the marketing, right? And you're not just doing marketing. You're probably doing seven other things as well. And it's really hard to really keep up with the latest best practices, tips, tricks, all this stuff. So the good news about what we're going to rip through right now is everything that I talk about costs nothing to implement. You don't have to go out and buy a new system. There is no uh, platform. Whatever platform you're sending your email out on, you can do what we're going to talk about now. And these little things, the world of email, it's the same case for social. Okay, it's the same case for search. It's the same case for almost all media. The littlest things can have the hugest impact. And I'm going to take you through that. Little things that can have a massive impact in terms of your actual performance. So what's the most important part of any email campaign? Let's start with that. Why do you open an email? Okay, why do you open an email? I got to saw this email the other day. Okay, nice dental office. I have no idea who this person is, but it's great. Who cares? Right? And the subject line was New Heartland Dental Blog Post. Is that exciting to me? So am I going to open this up because there's a new dental blog post? Unfortunately, the answer is no. Right? The most important, I don't care how good the blog is, could have the greatest information. Right? This is the greatest breakthrough in dentistry in 30 years. But to tell you the truth, I'll never know it because the subject line just didn't get me there. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care what your offer is. I don't care how good your creative is. I don't care what it is. If your subject line is not compelling, nobody's going to care about what's in your email. They're not going to see it. They're never going to see it. So what we analyze is the words that you could put in your subject line and what are the specific words, okay, they're going to yield the highest open rate. Open rate is you send out 10,000 emails, 
Okay, 2,000 people open it up, your open rate is 20%. You are focused, your absolute focus when you send out any email, the first most important metric is yes, how many did it get delivered to? I sent it out, did it all get there? Okay, great, it got there. The next metric is what is my open rate? How many people are opening up the email? Because I don't care what's in your message if it doesn't get open. So let's focus on getting it open. These are the words right now, as of April, or right, we just updated this April, what are the words that are causing the greatest amount of open rate increase? And you see, right, the number one word is free. Of course, we all love free. Free is always the number one word. It'll lift your open rate by 33%. But then you see words like limited, exclusive, tomorrow, today, last chance, expires. What's interesting about the words that perform the best right now, it's all saying basically the same thing. What are limited? Tomorrow, today, last chance expires, days left, don't miss, hurry. What do they all say? There's some form of a sense of urgency, right? And you may be saying to yourself, well, our stuff is not really like that because somebody's teeth are not going to fall out if they you know, don't come in, like two days left until your teeth fall out. No, that's ridiculous. But what can you have? What can you do? Number one, you may have offers, right? You may have uh, your teeth whitening offer that will expire, this special deal, blah, blah, blah. OK, or if you're a lab technician marketing to offices, you'll have all sorts of maybe you're doing a webinar. OK, two days left tomorrow. Last chance. Even if you don't have anything that is urgent, you can still have urgency by saying don't miss out. Right. Anything that you can do to tell the person, listen, human nature is very simple. We don't want the things that are always going to be there. We want the things that may not always be there. That's human nature. And the words are always changing. You know, six months ago, the word hurry wasn't on this list. And now it is. So when you're writing your subject lines, and, and even when you're writing your social media posts, okay, when you're writing anything, you, the headlines for the blog that you're publishing, whatever it is that you're putting out there, think about every word because every word matters. Now, in the world of email, there's a lot of myths. I hate to break the news to you, but Elvis is dead. Okay, Elvis is dead. Unfortunately, you know, just like everything else in our society, there's a lot of myths that get uh, perpetuated uh, and people start to believe them, right? People believe that uh, Walt Disney has his head frozen somewhere. He's going to come back to life in a thousand years. Nonsense myths. The world of email is filled with a lot of myths. Why do I tell you that? In the world of email, um, you may have heard, you may think that you can't use certain words in your subject line that you can't write certain words in your headline of your, of your email on your body copy because they are spammy words. They're words that are gonna cause you to go to the junk folder or the spam folder. It would be terrible, right? You send out your campaign and it goes to the junk folder or the spam folder because then how can anybody open up one of your emails? Here's a couple of realities. One reality is 20% of all email, I don't care if you are Apple, the NFL, uh, IBM, 20% of all emails will go to the junk folder. Here's the, and that, that's not because anybody's doing anything horribly wrong. 10, 15 years ago, you would go to the junk folder because of the words and the content that you put in your subject line, in your headline, your body copy. Why? Because 10 or 15 years ago, when email was really starting to get going, okay, um, there were limited ways from a technological perspective, a, te a technology way to filter out the bad guys from the good guys. So all the receiving email networks, Back then, like AOL and Earthlink and some of the old school guys, okay, back then, all the receiving email networks were like, we got to cut down on all this spam, all this horrible stuff that's coming in. Let's look for the most common words that spammers use. And they saw words like free, okay, or act now, or hurry, or an exclamation point, or capitalization, right, or a dollar sign, or anything like that. They would look for those things, and they would say, oh, this must be spam, and they would stick it in the junk or spam folder. And for... A period of like 10 years, this was how someone was deemed to be a spammer, right? But technology changed. You don't go to the spam folder anymore, the junk folder anymore. You don't get filtered because of the content that you're writing. You go to the junk or spam folder because of the lack of engagement, how often people are opening and clicking on any of the emails that you send. It has nothing to do with the content, the words, the symbols, the capitalization that you're doing. And the reason I tell you this, if you go out and you Google after you're done listening to this session, you say spam trigger words or words to avoid in my email. These are articles from now. 
Okay, you will see hundreds, if not thousands of articles that are telling you to avoid these words. And it's based on old, horrible information. I hate email experts. I don't proclaim to be one because it's a horrible group to be a part of because they tell things that are really old. The irony is what you're looking at here are the exact tactics that most email experts will tell you to absolutely avoid in the subject line, avoid in your body copy, avoid in your headline because you'll go to the junk folder and it's just not true anymore. So for example, right, you put free in the subject line. When I say B2B, that means business to business emails. When I say B2C, that means you're marketing to consumers. So the, the ones that are marketing to dentist offices, you guys are B2B. The ones that are marketing to uh, patients and, and prospects, that's B2C, right? So free we talk about. Brackets in the subject line. You take your offer, whatever it is, and you put brackets around it to start your subject line, it's going to lift your open rate 14 to 18%. An exclamation point, literally you hit the shift number one key and it will lift your open rate. These little things make a difference. Like I can't believe I'm giving up an hour of my day to hear this crazy guy, Jay, talk about these little minuscule things, but there's no silver bullet in email and there's no silver bullet in social and in search and in display, it's a series of little things. And you have to, every time you hit send on that email, okay, you, the emotion cannot be, oh, thank God I got it out, right? Because that's what 90% 90, 90 of the time it's, oh, thank God it got out the door and go on to the next thing. When, if you just took an extra five minutes, give a little, not even five minutes, 30 seconds, give a little more thought to your, to your subject line, throw an exclamation point, use numbers in your subject line. Why? Because they stand out. Use an emoji in your subject line. Capitalize a word in your subject line. All of these things are going to lift your open rate. And the more people that open up your email, what happens? The more people that can see what's in it, right? So when I get uh, an email from Dr. Matza here, uh, which is actually my kid's orthodontist, right? And, and I got this eight minutes ago before this session at nine o'clock this morning, right? And it has a number in the subject line. And at the end, it has an emoji in the subject line. Why does this matter? It's all about standing out. It's not where I got this email and I was like, oh, wow, this email is awesome. This subject line is amazing. It has a number and it has a tooth. I want to check this out. Nobody ever says that. No. But in that millisecond that you're scanning your emails, something catches your eye and you give it another millisecond, you possibly read the subject line, and then you open it up. It's that battle that when you need to get your send out just a little bit more than the next person's. Okay, so when, you know, Dental City, right, puts uh, the capitalize in the first two words, because it stands out. And look, they're using a sense of urgency. TikTok, time's almost up with these Q1 offers, right? It stands out. Why does Facebook knows a lot about data? Right, they know all of it. Why are they using brackets and capitalization at the start of their subject line? What do they know? They know it's going to get us to open up the email, right? So uh, numbers. When you actually put a number as the very first character in your subject line, it even gives it a greater list because it stands out. Now, when I talk about capitalization, here's another dental office. I'm not talking about capitalizing the whole thing. Not a huge fan of that because that there's a lot of funkiness with that. But capitalizing a word, two words, and like that, it stands out. But you see, when you go back to your inbox, you're going to see these things. You're like, oh my god, I never realized. I never saw numbers. I never, I never saw emojis. I never. I mean, I may have seen them, but I didn't realize I saw them. Right? I didn't see the capitalization. Right? Why does it all work? Because it stands out. Let's talk about emojis for a second. Right? Let's talk about emojis. Um, in the last 18 months, the big thing with emojis that has shifted is that now 94% of all recipients can view emojis with no problem. And it's even higher for consumers, set like 98%. That's been a big shift. Now you may say to yourself, listen, we try to have an, a good image. We try to um, uh, uh, project ourselves as very professional. We're not going to use emojis. And I'm not telling you to be Domino's Pizza. I mean, this is Domino's Pizza. This is our subject lines. I mean, these are totally ridiculous, okay? Now, do they get you to open up the email? Absolutely. And I'm not telling you to go this far, but you should sign up for these emails because it'll, it'll change your mind on what is possible, okay? And I'm not telling you to go as far as what Wayfair does, okay, with their subject lines and their pre-headers and all this stuff because it's crazy. I mean, sign up for these emails, they're crazy. But having that one symbol in your subject line, it stands out. 
it stands out. This is a chart here. On the left side is for consumer marketing. On the right side is for business marketing. These are the emojis that you put in your subject line and the open rate increase that you will see. Okay, it's there's no platform on earth, sending email platform. I don't care what you use, MailChimp, Constant Contact, Campaign Monitor, Salesforce, Marketo, I don't care. Everybody can, you can stick an emoji in the subject line, super easy, costs you nothing. It will render fine. Everyone will be able to see it fine. And it will stand out. Now, you may say to yourself, I hate emojis. They are juvenile. They're ridiculous. I don't like them. But you know what? It is a way for you to separate yourselves from everybody else. A way for you to separate yourselves from everybody else. And that is what we're looking for, right? So, and on the consumer side is up use in the last 18 months up 1700% for marketers and for business marketers up 3200%. So, okay. In general, our email marketing is putting people to sleep, right? So that's why we're trying to get your emails open. We got to get those emails open. You have, I'm sure, very important things to say about people's teeth and all this wonderful stuff. You've got to get those emails open. One of the problems is, is that a lot of uh, your way you guys market is you may have a blog, you might have a newsletter that you send out every week, right? And um, whether it's the labs or the offices themselves, you generally probably have some sort of piece of email content that you're sending out. And invariably, what a lot of marketers do, which makes no sense, is like, I have Goodreads here. I like Goodreads, tells me about books to read, whatever. And this is their subject line. The most exciting thing that happened to my Goodreads subject lines in the last six months was they forgot the word the one time and it actually stood out to me. Um, but this is what marketers do. They think by having a static subject line that it's some form of branding and that people are gonna be more inclined to open it, but they're not. It just becomes wallpaper. Like literally I could print out a thousand copies of, of this screen here and use it as wallpaper because it's that boring, okay? Now, what is working right? You have your newsletter that you send out weekly, monthly, whatever, your blog, whatever, like that guy at the beginning. Stick an emoji as the first character of your email newsletter. Okay, yay, something exciting. And it increases open rates 27% in the last six months just by adding one character. So we talk about little stuff having to make a huge difference. What else is working right now that's ridiculous? You're going to walk out of this thing and be like, I don't even know what that guy was just talking about. That guy was annoying. He talked a lot, very fast. Basically, I learned that my subject line stinks and that's what I got out of that. And you know what? Yeah, maybe it does stink. And maybe now we're gonna get more of your emails open. So what's working right now? Unfortunately, uh, society, we don't trust each other. We don't necessarily even like each other, but we absolutely don't trust each other at all. And we're seeing it more and more in marketing. And this relates to any marketing you're doing. Again, if you're thinking about a social post, okay, you're thinking about a blog thing, about any marketing you're doing, the same rules are applying right now. And it's a sad state of affairs. Like when I get this email from Angie, it says the true cost of 15 remodeling projects, right? And when you go back to your inbox, you're going to see this, right? The true cost. What's the real cost? What's the real value? Real traveler point of view. What does this all mean? Basically, what we're saying right now is we don't, tr we are so full of it. Every marketing thing that we see, not just in your sector, in all sectors, is a giant superlative. It says, this is the biggest sale of the year. This is the best. This is the worst, right? Everything is the extreme in every capacity. So now what's working in terms of marketing is actually saying, this is the truth. This is the true cost. This is the actual, this is the real, because you're telling the recipient of your marketing, again, it doesn't matter uh, uh, what, what channel it's in. This, this thing, forget about all the other stuff. This one is actually what's taking place. Okay, and it's increasing email open rates by 21% when you're using it in the subject line. All right, which is the easiest thing to do. I mean, look at Apple. This is Apple News. Almost all the time with Apple News, they'll put something in there that uses this tactic now. So at the end, the truth about the grace resignation, the surprising truth about whatever, the truth about night sweats, whatever. It's, they know the only way to get you to open it is to play the game. 
Now, the other side of this thing is that we are all clueless. And I think this speaks to your sector almost more than any other. Okay. Um, people have no idea what anything is. People don't know what anything means. But on some level, we're embarrassed that we don't know. We're just sort of embarrassed that we don't know. We don't even want to ask about it because it feels like, like, we, like we should know, right? Like we should know, right? So this concept of 101, right? The uh, how to clean your teeth, 101. Why is that the greatest subject line for any dentist office ever? Because of course, we all should know how to clean our teeth. Hopefully that's embarrassing if we don't. But you know what? A lot of people don't, but they don't want to say that. I don't want to say that because it's embarrassing. So what we can do in marketing is say, whatever, how to clean your teeth 101, the right way to floss 101, the whatever 101. 101 means, hey, we know you don't know, but we're going to help you out. This is working really, really well. Okay, it's working really, really well in marketing. Anything 101. It's the thing we should know, we don't know, but we're going to help out. 101 is actually lifting open rates by 19%. Right? And when you think that you don't have anything to email out, you always have stuff to email out. You could take anything and turn it into a 101. You could then say the next thing is 201, because we know 201 means, oh, this is like for people that know a little bit about. Again, it's all about the little stuff. And you know, when I started this session, I, 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 I said, everything we talk about today is stuff that you can go, literally, during your lunch hour, when this is over, if you have an email campaign going out, there's no reason you can't test some of this stuff. Every time you send out an email campaign, you should be testing something. It's an opportunity to test. And there's so many little things that you can test that cost you nothing. It takes three seconds to try. What's the downside? So more tips that are way too fast. The actual word tips. The actual word tips does great. Quick tips. Why? Because we have no time. Nobody has time for anything, right? Tips in the subject line increases open rates 19 to 21%. We just want things fast. Tell me fast. I don't want to be here forever. It's so boring. Everything's so boring, right? The word tips in the subject line is doing great. Four tips when you're thinking about teeth whitening. You know, four tips on how to improve your, your dental office uh, communication plan, whatever. It's like, oh, what does tips mean to you when you hear it? It means fast. It means that can be a lot. It means it can be quick. That's what we want, quick. Now, question marks, questions. We as a society, we love questions and we love answers. We don't care who's giving the answer. We just want answers. We like it. We like to, whatever the question is, we want the answer, okay? Right? Do you know how long uh, a root canal takes? No, I don't. But I'm going to open up the email and I'm going to find out. Question emails. In general, subject lines have a 27% higher overall open rate. Anything that you know, we turn into a question. Why has Jeopardy been around for 400 years? Why was everybody so broken up when Alex Trebek died? Because the entire show is just questions and answers that we pretty much can't answer. But we love it. Oh, look, it's a question. What's the answer? We love it. That's why this works. These little things do phenomenally well. What else does well? These three dots. These three dots are anxiety-inducing dots. Why are they anxiety-inducing dots? Because you're texting with a friend, right? And you have plans with them this weekend. And you're like, where should we go to dinner? And then all of a sudden, the person's writing back, right? And the three dots show up. And you're like, oh my God, what are they going to say? Are they going to say the new Mexican place? I hope so, because I really want to go there. And then the dots go away. And you're like, oh no, it's gone. And then they come back. And that suspense you don't realize it, but that suspense is exciting to you. And in the world of email, okay, in the world of email and in social posts and in search and in everything else, these three dots are magical dots. They're magical dots. And you're saying, you've got to be kidding me that we're about to talk about putting three dots at the end of a subject line. Yes, because it's all in the subconscious. It's not like I see a subject line that says, you need to see this dot, dot, dot. And I'm like, wow. This subject line is awesome. It has three dots. No, I would never say that. But subconsciously, it's telling me, oh my God, there's more there and I need to know what it is. And what do I do? I open up the email. Have you seen dot, dot, dot? These results are amazing, dot, dot, dot. If I got that from my dental office, these results are amazing, dot, dot, dot. I'm opening up saying, oh my God, look at the person's teeth. They're beautiful. I need to go in immediately and do what they do, right? Immediately. 
These dots do phenomenal, okay? They increase open rates by 28% on average when you use them because we just want to know. Amazon, for example, and it has nothing to do with there being more. It's not because there's more words in the subject line. Amazon, for a lot of their offers, they know a little bit about marketing. They stick the three dots at the end of a lot of their offer subject lines now because they know we are trained, like Pavlov dogs, whatever, we are trained to want to see what the rest of it is. So test it out. It's really easy. Going, going up, dot, 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 right? Now, let's talk about your website for a minute. Yeah, my wife always tells me, my wife's a doctor, actually. She's a dermatologist. I need to get Botox. She'll yell at me. She always tells me I need to breathe and drink water and calm down when I do webinars. She's probably right, but whatever. Anyway, why, why do people go to your website? They don't just fall onto your website. They're not like, oh, I'm on ESPN or I'm on Bloomingdale's and oh, I'm going to go to my dentist's website or I'm going to go to my lab technician, whatever website. No, you don't just do that. They're going to your site because they care about something on your page. They want some sort of information on your site, okay? So when they go there, what do you do, right? Do you just let them float around and then disappear, which is what 95% of the traffic that happens that goes to your website, they float around and then they disappear and you never knew they were there, okay? You never capture any information from them. And it's annoying because all you want to do is if you could get their email address, if you can get their information, you could then communicate with them. And over time, you could build up a relationship with them. And then when the time is right for them to make a switch or to do whatever, they'll be like, oh, yeah, I get these emails. I get the emails from these people. They're the right people. We should use these people. I love their emails. Right? But you didn't get their emails. So you can't. But pop up contact capture you go to a site pops up you go to nike pops up pops up the little window we've all seen these windows they ask you for your email address usually incentivize you say hey by the way if you give us email address you know they'll either give you a piece of content like here's uh the five tips that you need to think about when you're choosing a dentist you can download it right now right or here's a uh something or some other piece of content or they'll give you a discount you know give us your email address you'll get 10 percent off your first treatment whatever it is why do they do that? Why do all these websites do that? They know because the value of getting that data is critical. The first time visitors to your site, you can capture 6% of the people that are visiting your site. They will fill it out. Five time site visits, you'll capture 10% of that traffic. You'll get their data. That costs you nothing. It costs you nothing, right? Um, and then you could do it even on the way out from leaving this site before you go claim this whatever, get this thing, right? And it's everywhere. You could also have it at different locations. Doesn't even need to just be a pop-up, could be on the bottom. You need to have the opportunity to grab their data. It can't be like on this contact us page, just sitting back there. It's gotta be on every page. It's gotta be right in your face. Now you're probably saying, oh, that's annoying. I go to a website, I don't like that, right? Which may be true, but here's the story. Think about, it. okay, you go to, you go to a website, pops up that, that window, the little, the little window. And on the top right-hand corner of that window has an X. And you don't like it. Oh, this is bad. So what do you do? Do you hit the X and say, I hate you, website, and leave immediately and say, I'll never do business with you? Or do you hit the X, you forget about it, you don't even know that you did it, and then you go on to the site? Yeah, that's what we all do. And that's why who cares? There's no downside because there are a lot of people like, oh, I want the thing. I want the piece of content. I want the discount. I want the thing. And now they're in your database. And that's what matters. Pop-up contact captures up 350% in the last 12 months. It's so easy. It's so easy. You know, Bed Bath & Beyond. I mean, unbelievable. And you know what? Best Buy does a great job. They're actually capturing your SMS, right? And another great path here, right? Capture the data capture the data that's what you got to be saying to yourself your website they're there for a reason they want to know from you but they can't know from you if you don't get their data you know ulta they do it on every page now you may say to yourself i don't really see this that much when i go on the internet i think he's wrong and the reason being is we all go to basically the same hundred websites 
ourselves. Not me and you go to the same sites, but you go to the same hundred websites over and over again. And your computer uh, has already cached all those websites and your computer has cookies from all those websites. Go and either wipe out your cache or launch an incognito browser, launch a new browser, totally incognito, right? And surf the internet. And you will see a different experience than what you see every day. You'll see more of what marketers are trying to do to grab your information. The reason you're not seeing it now is because you've been to that website 400 times, right? And it's already built in. You're not gonna see those, those notifications. So anyway, some marketers do this, right? They do the rude maneuver, which I think is awesome. It's not really rude, but it's uh, give us your information or the option, there's always two options. No, I don't want the latest trends. You have to actually be rude. You have to insult yourself to not put in the thing. So, right, so instead of getting the discount here, it says, no thanks, I don't want to look my best. Right, you actually have to insult yourself to not do the thing. Negative tone, no option, increases registration rates by 22 to 34%, right? Your advanced auto parts, get 25% off all your orders or no thanks, I'd rather pay full price, right? These little things have a huge impact. How about Esquire? I love Esquire, right? Put your email address in to join their book club or you have to click, I don't read. I mean, there's a book club, I don't read, you're reading it, it's all beautiful. A few other things I get asked about a lot. Um, can I put a video in my email? I want to, we have a video, a new procedure, a new thingamabob, can I put a video in my email? Don't do that, don't do that. It creates, makes the file size very, very large of the email that you're sending out, okay? And that causes you to go to the junk folder, the spam folder, causes deliverability issues in general. What you should do, best way to do it is take a screenshot of the first part of your video stick a big red play button right on that picture what are we trained to do we're trained to click that button so when you send out your email just have it be one picture an image of the video with a big red play button the person will click the play button they will go to the landing page they then will click again to watch the video and life will be grand no deliverability problems super high click through rate all works really well. Having that play, that big red play button will increase your click-through rate by 34%, right? So no deliverability problems, great click-through rate, we win, hooray. A few other things, and then we'll do some time for questions and whatever. Now, somebody gives you their email address information. They fill out the paperwork in your office. They sign up for something. At some point, they give you their email address. Hooray! Thank you for giving me the email address. What do you do with that email address? Okay, what do you do? You send them an email. You say, thank you very much, or whatever you say, right? But that email is the most important email you're ever going to send out. Numero uno. Not because, oh, it's the first time, you want to make sure the person feels comfortable. No. What's happening in that first time you send an email is, an email is leaving your infrastructure, your sending infrastructure from a technical perspective for the first time. And it's going to the receiving infrastructure of the patient or the person that you're marketing to or the business. And those two infrastructures are talking to each other for the first time. If, you, if the recipient opens the email, it's sending back a notification to that sending infrastructure. Hey, we like emails from this send. When, when, when you send us emails, we're going to keep them in the inbox because the person just opened it up. Or if the person doesn't open up because it's that first email, the likelihood of staying in the inbox goes down massively because the receiving infrastructure said, ooh, first time we got an email from this sender, they didn't open it up, must not care about them, maybe it's not even real, junk folder time. The reason I tell you this is, that subject line in that email that you send is the most important thing that you have going on. Because if you don't get that first email open, you're screwed. Okay, so that subject line really needs to be excited about your appointment, dot, dot, dot. If you send out an email to the person and it says, not confirming your appointment, because the person doesn't need to open that. They know what it says. If it says about your appointment, you're like, oh, and then you open up, yeah, just to confirm this is it, great. Thank you, and confirmed, and this is for you. Anything to get that email open. New contacts who open the first email convert to clients 20 to 25% more than those that don't is a beautiful thing. 
One other quick tip, the logo in your email. Everything in your email should go to the page that you want to go. Do you want the logo clicking through to your homepage or some other destination page? Maybe you have an offer, a piece of content, whatever. Over 20% of all the clicks in the message that you send out are not going to be on the links that you want them to click. It's going to be on your logo. Think about every link in your message. All right, a few little things before we uh, get to questions. Okay, so first off, um, I put out a calendar, the best and worst days to send out your email marketing campaigns. We have a consumer one and a business one, it's free. It's a digital calendar. Red days are days you may want to avoid for a lot of reasons. Green days are days that are optimal for performance from all the data that we have. If you want a copy of the best and worst days to send out email, you can email me. I'll put my email address up here and you can email me and I'll send that to you. I have a newsletter, it's called Inside Scoop. Every couple of weeks I send out newsletters and tips, tactics and stuff, it's totally free. Uh, similar to what we went over today. Uh, if you want that, you can say, add me to Scoop, sign me up for a newsletter. Uh, we are putting on a conference, a 100% free marketing conference in November. It is a two day email marketing conference. We're gonna have over 30 speakers. It's 100% free, it is virtual. It is going to be in November. I would love for you to sign up at guruconference.com. It's going to be a blast. I'll be there. Uh, my company's putting it on, so it's a lot of speakers that we know. It's going to be super cool. Okay. If you don't want to deal with all that, you could also just email me and say, send me everything. Sign me up for Guru. Send me the slides. Send me the calendar. Sign me up for Scoop. Uh, just send me an email that says, send me everything to J-A-Y-S at corpwd.com, and I will get you signed up for all the nonsense that I just uh, described. So with that, I don't know if we have any questions of any kind, but if we do, that's cool. And I'm gonna put my uh, email in the uh, chat. Okay, thank you so much. What a great program. And everyone who was on, uh, I think you'll agree with me. Uh, I wasn't kidding when I said you're in for a treat. Um, as always, you know, delivered beautifully and it's a lot of fun. Uh, we have, let me see. We have no questions on the board yet, but I know there. Let me just see. Uh, well, we got a lot of thank yous to you. Um, and any questions in there? Uh, one thing I will tell you is that um, Whitmix discovered Jay uh, probably two years ago or something like that. Um, it was at a HubSpot conference, and uh, I think that was the first virtual one they had. Uh, because of COVID, and um, he was just so impressive to us that uh, uh, Chelsea and I had started uh, right away to join his group, his organization. We uh, use the email calendar regularly, so we know when the best days and, and worst days are to send emails, and also we signed up for the Guru 2022 meeting. It's going to be an awesome one, so I hope that some of you will be able to. I got a question just popped up. Is there a correlation with the length of the subject line with open rate? Yeah, that's an excellent question. Um, you know, in general, um, people like to say you should keep it under 50 characters. Uh, that's what people tend to say. More important, and you don't hear this often enough, than the length of the subject line, it's the most important stuff has to be in the first half of the subject line. And really the first few characters is the most important. So if you're going to have, you know, uh, a tip sheet, you know, seven things you need to know, that number seven is critical is first, that emoji being first. If you're going to capitalize it, capitalize that first word. Anything that takes place in the second half of your subject line is not going to be seen. But if you're looking for a number, um, you know, under 50 is a good idea. And we have a website, which I probably should have mentioned, subjectline.com is a division of my company. It's a free website. You can go to subjectline.com and you can put your subject line in. It'll tell you how good or bad it is before you send it out. And we've checked uh, 15 million subject lines. So it's pretty, it's a pretty uh, thorough review of your subject lines. And the other thing that we didn't really talk about is the pre-header. So, you know, it's that, that's that gray line that shows up under the subject line when you're looking at your emails. Uh, you always want to make sure that you're not having that button say, you know, click here if you're having trouble viewing. That's not what you want to use that real estate for. You want to use that real estate to drive home whatever it is, the topic of your email. So almost uh, another version of a subject line, if you will. Thank you. Great answer. Uh, let me see. Can we get a printout of the information from this webinar? Yeah. I mean, if you email me to that address I just threw in the chat, I will be. I will send you over a PDF link of, the, of all the slides. Um, and then uh, you'll have everything that's going on. And please also, please connect with me on LinkedIn. 
I love connecting on LinkedIn. So um, uh, that would be awesome. I'll even try to throw. Well, you can find me. You got my name. Just, just hit me up. That's great. Uh, another question just came in, and that is, do you have any tips for cleaning, for keeping the database clean? Yeah, so uh, data hygiene is obviously super, super important because you don't want to wind up hitting spam traps, all the different types of stuff. Um, there's one company that does a really good job. There's one company that does a really good job that uh, can validate your email and can remove spam traps. All that stuff. It's called Webula. Uh, they're a partner of mine. I will put them, uh, Webula, there in the chat. Um, and as a matter of fact, um, what's the guy's name over there? Oh, Jack Wrigley. There you go. Jack Wrigley is the guy. And you can give them your, you give them the data, and they will validate everything, tell you what's deliverable, not deliverable, get rid of really bad stuff that's been formatted wrong. Uh, they also have the ability to do email appends. So if you don't have email address or old email address for people, they can they can append on uh, the new information. And please feel free to use my name and uh, tell Jack I sent you. Great, thank you for that. Uh, are there any other questions? Now's the time because once this is recorded, it, it's too late. Uh, so please, I'll give you another moment. And and if you, we don't have any questions, then we'll say thank you and goodbye. Um, I don't have any. All right. Well, it's great. I really appreciate you guys. Job. Yeah, and feel free to consider me a resource. You know, if anything ever comes up, you have any questions about whether it's email or any other form of marketing, I, uh, I like talking about this stuff. So message me, email me, whatever. And it's great to great to know you all. Thank you guys for the time. Well, thank you so much, Jay. Look forward to, to seeing you in the future and certainly at Guru 2022. I'll be there for sure. All right, thank you all guys. Right. Take care. Take care.